Hello and welcome everyone to a new video. Uh, my name is Emma and I'm the craft designer behind Emma Crafts Design. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make this shamrock or three leaf clover for St. Patrick's Day. So let's get started with um, materials and tools. So I'll be using this green yarn. This is eight ply yarn, you know, my preferred yarn. And I am using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, and I will also need a darning needle. No stuffing required for today's make. So um, keep in mind, this one was made using um, 10 ply yarn. So this is worsted, I think. Um, whereas this one is, oops, this one is um, DK, so um, a ply. And so this one will um, is bigger than what our one that we're going to make today is going to be. So I will show you how to make the leaves. So it's three times the same to make the leaves. So I'll show you in detail how to make that one leaf um, yeah, first. And then I'll probably fast forwards for the next two. And I will also show you how to make the stem. So for this, I used a Romanian cord. So I'll show you how to do this today, but I think I'll also make um, another video tutorial um, to show you how to make cords in general in crochet. Um, but don't worry, I will show you exactly how I made that Romanian cord for today's tutorial. Okay, let's get started. So to start with, we're going to um, make the leaves. They worked in rounds. So we're going to make a magic ring. If you're um, not familiar with the uh, method, you can watch one of my other videos on how to make a magic ring. And we are going to single crochet six into that magic ring. Okay, so I've now got six single crochet in my magic ring. As usual, my little trick for you is that you don't want to um, make it too tight, otherwise it will be harder to go into that first stitch. So the second round is going to be to increase in each stitch. So we'll just do an increase in each stitch. And I will have the written pattern as well available for free onto my blog. I will link it below so that you can ha access it if you would rather also follow the written pattern along or you can just crochet along with me. Okay, so now that I have finished round two, so I'm just gonna check. Yeah, I do have my 12 stitches here. So now I'm gonna just tighten my magic ring. All right, and round three will just be to single crochet into each stitch. Okay, so now I've single crochet 12 and I am going to fasten off this bit. So this will be the first side of the leaf. So we'll just fasten it off. So we'll just tie it off. Uh, we want to leave a longish yarn tail so that we'll be able to um, do the next step. I'll show you in a minute. All right, so now that we have that first little part here, we're going to make a second part exactly the same. So we will single crochet six into a magic ring. Okay. 
Okay, and then we will increase into each stitch until we reach 12. So And then for round three, we're going to single crochet in each stitch. So 12. Okay, so now this time we are not going to fasten off that second part. Okay, we're just going to continue directly while crocheting onto um, that first part that we had there to join them together and continue on to our clover leaf. So the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to insert the hook into the first. So see where we fastened off? We're going to just take the next stitch. So that was the first stitch of the round. And we're going to single crochet 12 all around. So if you're left-handed, you will be placing um, that first pass onto the other side. So this is for right-handed because I'm right-handed, obviously. Eleven and twelve. Okay, so now that I've done my twelve stitches around um, that first part, we're going to go back onto the second part. So here is where it can be a little bit tricky because you will see that this one that looks like the first free stitch is actually not, and um, we'll need to go onto this one, the next one here. So see how there was a stitch on here. So we need to go onto the next one. And I know this will make a hole, which is why we kept a long tail of yarn. So we're just going to single crochet 12 around here. Okay, and so now that we've crocheted um, 12 around this one and 12 around this one, we should have a total stitch count of 24. So I'm just going to put my marker here to mark the end of my rounds. So we won't sew the hole. See how there's a hole here? We won't sew that straight away. We're just going to wait a little bit, um, probably a couple of rounds past, um, and then we're going to sew it close before we get finished. So the next two rounds, so that will be rounds um, five and six, we're just going to single crochet in each um, stitch. So that will give us a total of um, 24 stitches. Right, so now I've done my two rounds of 24 stitches, we can use that yarn tail that we kept to sew that hole. So I will just 
So make sure that you are using the yarn tail from that first part that we made together and not the inside yarn tails. And then we are going to sew that hole. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of put my needle to this side and then I will just pick up a few stitches and just roughly sew it close. When you sew um, pieces in amigurumi, you want to kind of go back and forth a few times. Generally, to make it secure, um, three back and forth are the golden rule. So I will just do it a few more times to make sure it doesn't come unraveled. And then what I'll do is I'll actually leave that yarn tail on the inside. So we're not going to starve those, but I guess if you wanted to, you could. Um, but I'm not going to stuff them. I'm just going to leave those yarn tails. I might just cut them slightly shorter, but I'm going to leave them inside. Here we go. Put them in. And so that should prevent um, them from unraveling. Nothing should unravel with that. Okay, so now that we've finished round six, we're going to move on to round seven. So this is where we're going to start the decreases so that we can um, then um, have that shape, that heart shape. Okay, so the next round, round seven, we are going to single crochet two and then do an invisible decrease. If you're not familiar with invisible decreases, I have made a video for you where you can have a look on how I do them. Um, I show you how to do decreases a few different ways. So yeah, if you're not familiar with that, might be worth checking. So we're just single crochet two and then doing a decrease over to stitches. And then we are repeating this six times so that we go down to eight in stitches. All right, now we have eight in stitches. We are going to single crochet one in each stitch around for round eight. So we'll just do 18 single crochets. All right, now that we've single crochet 18 times around, we are going to do another round of decreases. So this time we're gonna single crochet one and then do a decrease and um, that for the whole round. So this is round nine. So we single crochet one and then do an invisible decrease. All right, 
I'm going to stop using my stitch marker from now on because um, I think it's just like too much effort to put it on and back off when the rounds are so small. Um, let me know though, I'd love to know, do you guys use your stitch markers the whole way around or do you stop um, using them once you have a small enough number of stitches? I'd like to know if I'm the only one who just like can't be bothered to put it back on. Um, so for round 10, we're just going to single crochet one in each stitch. So we're going to single crochet 12. Okay, so now that we've single crochet 12, we are going to move on to our last round, which is round 11, where we're going to do six decreases to go down to six stitches. So. Okay, so now we are back down to six stitches and we're going to fast enough and we're going to leave um, a decently long tail so that we can just do sewing afterwards. Probably don't need to leave it that, quite that long, but better safe than sorry. Okay. All right, so we are not going to actually close this piece. We will leave it like that because we are going to attach it to the other leaves. Um, because we're only making a three leaf clovers, we're going to repeat this twice more until we've got three petals.
Okay, so now that we've got the three leaves for our clover, we can get on to making the stem. So to do this, we are going to do what's called a Romanian cord. So I just did a slip knot. So you just twist the yarn and then do a slip knot. Then you're going to put your hook onto the slip knot. And this is how you're going to start your um, cord. So you will chain two. And then you will single crochet one into the second chain from the hook. So you have two chain here, you'll just single crochet one here. So this is the really fun part. We're not going to crochet in the actual stitch. We're going to turn our work a quarter of a turn towards the back. And then do you see this loop here? You're going to just insert your hook under that loop. And we are going to pull up a loop. Oops. Just pull up one loop and then complete your single crochet stitch as normal. And then we're going to do it again. So we're turning quarter of a turn to the back. Then we are inserting our hook under the two loops this time. There's two loops there. Then we're going to pull up a loop here. And then we are going to finish our single crochet. And so this is the basis to make a Romanian cord. So we're going to continue. So I've done it twice already. We're going to do that 18 more times. So a little trick to count if you've done the right number of um, rows, you can count those little bumps here to the side. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And on the other side I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this means that I have now made 20 rows. So you pretty much count the little those little bumps here on each side and that will give you the number of times that you have repeated the rows to make your Romanian cord so that you just don't have to count like every single row. Okay, so now that we've made 20 rows for our Romanian cord, we can just fasten this off and it will be time for assembly. So this is your stem. So the first thing that I'm going to um, do is actually I'm going to attach those three leaves together. So I'll grab my first leaf and I'll try to actually leave all the yarn tails on the same side so yeah like this would be good so i'm going to first kind of close this whole flat so um and then i will attach it to the next leaf So I'm just going back and forth through both layers. And then because my yarn tail is still long enough, I will go on and join that third leaf too. So again, we're just going to go back and forth through both layers of the opening of the leaf. Okay, and now that I have got all three 
leaves that are attached there. I will just quickly go back into that first leaf and just kind of close that. Um, and then you can just kind of go back and forth a few times to secure that yarn end. And we'll do the same with the other yarn tail. So we'll just go and secure them in place by just going back and forth a few times. So this one is done. I'll just cut it so that I know that it's secure. And then we'll just go and secure the other two yarn tails as well. Okay, perfect. So we can just cut those. Awesome. Now the next step will be to attach the stem. So the chain where you started your stem, we're gonna just put that thread back in. So you just kind of weave it in. Just go back and forth a few times. And then with the other end, so you left the yarn tail there, we're gonna now sew that onto our shamrock to finish it. So I'll go in the gap here that I kind of left and I will just go and attach it. So it's just a matter of making sure that you put one stitch onto those clover leaves and one stitch onto the stem to make sure that it's secure in place and you can try to make sure that you put it evenly as well okay i think that looks pretty good so now i'm just going to weave in the yarn tail inside the main leaves of the clover and that will be it Okay, awesome. So we have now finished our three leaf clover. So you can see again by using different sizes of um, yarn and hooks, you get different sizes of finished objects. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please um, give me a thumbs up on that video and you can also subscribe to see more content from me. You can also find me on all social on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and yeah, and of course on my website. So don't forget to go check out the written pattern if you'd like a written support for this pattern. And um, that's it for today. Thanks. See you later.